My name's Steve, I'm from a company called Systems and Network Training. I do do training now and then, uh, less so these days, but um, what I'm here to talk about is the Lynx Accredited Training Programme. I think a lot of you know about it already, but some of you are new, so here we go. It involves three separate courses, each one's a week long. Uh, sounds like a long time, three weeks, but actually it's a very, very short time to cover everything that a lot of you guys know. Uh, the key thing about the training programs is it is hands-on training, so there's lots of hands-on. Uh, interestingly, uh, we're moving away from real kit. Um, so real kit is being used for the beginner courses, uh, Lynx 1. Uh, Lynx 2 is in a state of flux at the moment, and we're offering students the chance to work with real kit or with GNS3. Uh, and interestingly, the last one that ran, ran with real kit. That's what they preferred. Um, and Lynx Week 3 has now moved over to GNS3. That, that introduces some interesting things in terms of the amount of kit per student, et cetera, et cetera, and the amount of time the instructor has troubleshooting. Uh, the other key thing is, uh, although it's hands-on training, we don't uh, do product training as such. What we're focused on more is the RFCs. So um, that's what we're covering with the Lynx Accredited Training Program. So there's three separate weeks. Uh, the first week is Lynx Week 1, or Lynx Accredited Internet Technician, which is a mouthful uh, one. And what do we cover on that? Well, the key areas, actually, is not just IP, but we actually cover TCP and IP. Uh, we don't do cables. So if I go back to 2001, which is when the training first started, we did do cabling to some degree, but the trouble is when you've only got five days, what do you actually concentrate on? Um, we do less cabling, uh, less on the network cars and focus, pu uh, not purely, but a lot on IP and TCP. Uh, we also concentrate on the different applications. Um, uh, what we've got here is IP, so we are obviously work with routers. So in the first week of training, we do look at routing, but also we do look at the end systems. So uh, to do with TCP, it's end-to-end, -end, uh, hence the slide showing that particular part, uh, and we do look at TCP. Obviously, there's a whole lot of other protocols we do cover, so we do cover ARC, we cover ICMP, we cover UDP, etc., etc. Uh, we also cover applications, but that's not the core flow of the course. The course is more structured about the network software, uh, but applications, uh, obviously web traffic, uh, voice traffic, and video traffic. We look at all of that. Uh, key thing is the icon at the top, which is Wireshark. Uh, so Wireshark's used throughout to analyse the headers. We don't just talk about it. Um, there's RFCs at the bottom. I'm sure you all know them. In fact, there's one you may not know, uh, which isn't actually covered in the course. Uh, I'll leave that for homework, or you can ask questions at the end as to which one's not covered. Yeah. Anyway, right, uh, as an example of what we're covering in Lynx 1, uh, this is an example slide. Um, so the basic idea is we start from the beginning, uh, although I think just about everyone on the Lynx Week 1 course will have come across ping. Uh, but the basic idea is we do cover ping among lots and lots of other troubleshooting tools like NS Lookup, Trace Route, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, and the basic idea is one of the things we want students to be able to do is troubleshoot networks to a basic degree and here's a slide talking about troubleshooting which is if ping works where's the issue uh, if the network's broken or if ping doesn't work where's the issue um, so ping works at layer 3 and that's an example slide um, interestingly some of you are more advanced than others so you'll already be thinking ah oh, but there's always exceptions to this so you may be thinking about firewalls etc etc but that would all be discussed in the course yep and that's an example slide yep uh, by the way, there will be questions on all this later. Whether I pick on you individually, I'm not sure yet. But anyway, keep them going. Links week two. Uh, that's the second week of training. Uh, by this stage, what we're focused on is routing. So links week two is purely, not purely on routing, but mainly focused on routing, routing, and more routing. Again, what we're looking at is not specific product training. The idea is we want to concentrate more on how the protocols work. Uh, and example protocols, 
protocols are OSPF and ISIS. Uh, we also cover VRP. Uh, again, don't, uh, this is not an example slide, it's just different things taken from the course. So VRRP is not a routing protocol, but it is something that's covered in the course. Uh, there's a routing table at the bottom there. Uh, we cover routing tables. So again, you've got to imagine if you were beginning from scratch, what sort of things do you need to be covered? And the idea is you should be able to read a routing table by the end of the course. Yeah, okay. Uh, and there's an example routing table that would go be gone through. Subnetting is covered in Links Week 1, but mainly to the byte level. Uh, by the end of this course, you should be working to the bit level uh, within seconds is basically what we all want you to be able to do. Uh, out of those RFCs, I don't know whether many of... Yeah, lots of you must read RFCs. RFC 7142 is quite a nice RFC, uh, given how short it is. And basically it says there shouldn't be an RFC for ISIS, which is the sort of RFC I like write, reading. Um, here's an example slide. So I showed you an example slide from Links Week 1. Uh, as I said, all the courses are hands-on. So this slide is actually an example of a hands-on exercise. So so uh, one of the things we cover in a lot of detail in Links Week 2, perhaps too much detail, but uh, we're always reviewing things, is actually OSPF. Uh, and this is an example of OSPF and inter-area working. Again, uh, the idea behind this is we have a maximum of eight delegates on a course, and the idea was that we could have two pods of four, uh, which works quite nicely with real kit. Each student gets a router. What we've now moved to is if you're using GNS3, you'll be configuring all four routers yourself, which leads to interesting things. Yeah. Uh, again, some of you that may be experienced, the interesting part of this slide is actually and it is very interesting technically, is between router 2 and router 4. Uh, so in the exercise, it's quite interesting that the basic idea is you should realise that the link between router 2 and router 4 shouldn't be there, and as long as that link's not there, it all works quite nicely, and you can see all the inter-area traffic goes via the backbone. The interesting thing is when you put the link between router 2 and router 4, it shouldn't work. Uh, you get interesting results depending on the kit that you are using, uh, but to get it to work, you can use virtual links. So virtual links are then configured to get that link working later. Anyway, that's another example slide. Uh, I must keep track of time, because uh, like I say, there will be questions. Links week three, so the basic idea is links week one is all about IP networking and is a foundation. Links two is getting you used to routing uh, and routing protocols, what they do, reading routing tables, etc. Uh, links week three is all about peering, peering, and more peering. So basically, it's all about BGP. Uh, and this is just, uh, just showing that it's all about peering. Uh, here's an example slide. So again, um, all the slides are diagrams. Almost all the slides are diagrams. We don't do bullet point text. Uh, the idea is there's courseware, and underneath the slides, there'll be uh, text to describe them all. So this is a slide on uh, manipulating the way BGP can route traffic. So in this particular slide, what we're showing is the AS path prepend method. And this is where we're talking about it. Uh, and the traffic will actually be going uh, it will be taking the top link even though normally it would take the bottom link and the reason is uh, AS4 is actually prepending with the AS path uh, so if you're new to all this and not technical I haven't really got time to explain a whole lot of detail about it all but uh, there you go uh, so anyway uh, that's AS path prepend it's one way to influence traffic flows through the internet yeah okay and that's one of the things we discuss in detail um, things continue change. It's quite interesting. So 2001, TCP IP was there. It's still there, and it's pretty much the same as it was. Uh, BGP, also pretty much the same as it was. A lot of the things are the same, but there's little changes here and there. So as an example of a recent update in Link Suite 3, we cover BGP, and one of the things that was introduced, oh, uh, I don't know, but I think around July time last year, was there was a new RFC on large communities. So communities always had a problem in that the name really only allowed for a 16-bit AS number. 32-bit AS numbers came in... Ooh. 
uh, a long, long time ago, but large communities have only just arrived, and they allow you to have a community name that is actually uh, longer than 16 bits. It allows for a 32-bit name. It also has some nice other features, which we talk about, and that's just an example of an update. Uh, another example update is RFC 8212, uh, which is from, oh, that's from July 2017. So again, from last year, um, we haven't, uh, we talk about it, but we haven't really implemented it yet. But then uh, I'm not bang up to date with who is implementing it, who isn't implementing it yet. Uh, what's it all to do with? Uh, I like BGP in terms of when you, uh, set it up out of the box and it's one of the first BGP exercise we do, just two routers back to back, you've got to start somewhere is you set up BGP and it all works, everyone tells everyone about everything. Uh, RFC 8212 uh, changes that uh, when it's implemented and the basic idea is when you peer with your BGP neighbour, rather than working nothing works, yeah, okay uh, which is actually pretty neat uh, because troubleshooting's got to work straight away and the basic idea is you have to explicitly uh, specify policy uh, for which routes you want to propagate or not. So that's another example update and when things like this came along it can have a big knock-on effect on all the exercises because at the moment a lot of the policy is covered later in the course um, after covering things like BGP with Wireshark etc etc. Uh, but those are the sort of changes that are actually happening. Right, there's exams. As I keep saying, there will be a test and whatever. Uh, oh, that's a good sign as well. <laughs> um, so uh, we've also got the exams. Uh, so at the end of each course, there's a certification if you pass the exam. Uh, the exams are interesting in terms of uh, they are not computer-based currently. That may change, but there is an issue. Uh, but I'll come back to that. So the exams are multiple choice. Uh, that does mean if there were two possible answers, answers for each one you get 50% normally, uh, but there's more than two, often there's four, five, six different options, but it's still multiple choice. Uh, but there are two main types of question. Circle the best answer, uh, which is obviously you only meant a circle one, which is fair enough. But the tricky one, uh, which a lot of people don't like, but it does mean that you don't guess so easily anymore, is circle that apply. Now circle that all that apply means that there's more than one answer, so you know there's got to be at least two, but there may be 12 different choices. Now what that means is, if you tick five, but we wanted six, tough luck, you get zero marks. Uh, there's no half marks or anything like that. If we wanted five, you tick six, tough luck again. Yeah, okay. What that does mean is quite often people that sort of know what they're doing will know five and then the sixth one they're not sure about and they could take a 50-50 guess. Uh, but if you're saying we only want five, then that 50-50 guess has become... 100%, I guess. But anyway, um, that's the two types of question. Now, what you'll find is um, exams are quite contentious, uh, as some of you may know. Uh, so written comments are considered by technical people. So if you feel the question is ambiguous, you can write comments, and those comments are considered, which is um, well, unique, I think, in terms of it is considered in the marking of the exam. Yeah, okay. Uh, the links one exam is 40 questions, links two and three are 60 questions each. Uh, 120 minutes gives you about two minutes a question, uh, whereas links one is about a minute and a bit for each question, yeah? Uh, links one, most people don't struggle for time, links two and three may be a bit different. However, what I've got is some example questions for you. So uh, what we're going to do is have a look at this. I should, I'll should give you a minute, roughly, um, go a bit quicker than that. This one's quite an easy one. It is a links one question. So it's circled the best answer. So we won't only want one answer. I'm going to ask someone in a minute. Um, and what you've got is an example of something. Um, it doesn't tell you what it is. But is it a routing table, a bridge table, a map table, or a ARP table? An art table, it should say. But anyway, uh, is the answer A, B, C, or D? Anyone? D. 
Uh, yes, whoever said that, D is the correct answer. I was beginning to think, oh, maybe you're not that technical, but you know, anyway, uh, D is the right answer. So, you know, and the basic idea is, uh, it is an art table, that's the sort of thing we want people to uh, understand. Uh, there's obviously other questions we could ask on that, etc. And there are other questions on art tables to do with static, dynamic entries, etc, etc. But that's an example of a nice, easy question. This is another question that um, used to be in there. I don't think this question's in there anymore. So this one's circle to apply. Again, I think it's quite an easy question, but the idea is you do need to know what DHCP does. Um, and the answer, and again, I should give you a minute, so I'll give you your advance, so I'll give you about 30 seconds, but the answers could be A, B, C, D, E, or F. It's got to be more than one of them. Um, and the question is, which one is it? So what is it that D DHCP does. Hopefully while I'm talking and talking and talking, you're either on internet relay chat or actually having a look at that and actually working out what's the answer. Uh, does anyone know the answer? Uh, it's got to be a brave man that will actually shout out or, or put the hand up. Uh, for... ACD. ACD. Um, does anyone disagree with that? Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> yes, but because uh, <laughs> we're going by the <laughs> yeah, yeah, now implementations are interesting. So I've got some example links free questions uh, which are implementation specific. So although we teach the RSCs, there's no getting away from it. You've also got implementations. However, for example, ACD is the correct answer. I can't see that uh, I've never seen DHC build a routing table. Um, again, and if you have, that's where you could write a comment and then we'd have to investigate. Uh, dynamically switching to another level three protocol, I've got no idea what that would involve, so that's wrong. Uh, and dynamically t installing TCP IP on hosts uh, would be pretty interesting that DHCP already uses it. So anyway, AC and D, I think, are pretty much okay. Right, links two, we take a step up here, um, and the questions get a bit harder. Uh, it's not that hard, much harder, so hopefully you can see that all clearly. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit while you read it out, and then I'm going to ask who it is. But the basic idea is, links week two is all about routing, routing, and more routing. So the idea is you should be able to read a routing table. The fact that that's come from a uh, system... Uh, no, it hasn't come from, it's come from a PC, so it does tell you that in the question. Uh, there's a PC routing table, so the question is, what is the answer? Uh, so this is an interesting one. Uh, does anyone want to go for the answer? So the idea is, hopefully you've looked at the routing table, um, and some of those are just totally wrong, and some of them are plausibly wrong, etc. So what's the answer for that one? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll give you a little bit more time. Uh, B is true, B is true, yes. Uh, B and e. e, yes, B and E are the correct answers. Yeah, okay, so B and E are the correct answers. Interesting ones are things like that there is a default gateway, there is only one uh, default gateway there, so students should know what a default gateway is, they should know about packets for network 11 won't be dropped because they will go towards the default gateway, packets for network 10 where we're attached to network 10, etc. So again, that gives you an example and uh, yeah, there you go. Right, links free. Here's an example links free question um, and uh, I'll let you read it. So that is an output from a Cisco um, and the basic idea is it's circle order apply again. So circling all that apply, you've got A, B, C, D, E, it fell off the page and therefore it's wrapped round to F and G. Um, G is an interesting one, it's wrong, I've got no idea what a state four would be, but uh, I'm just giving you time to have a look at that output. So the idea is links week three is all about BGP. Um, so the question is, 
You know, things like you should know that eBGP is exterior BGP as opposed to interior BGP. So you should be able to work out whether A is true or false. Uh, you should be able to troubleshoot. Uh, so we should know that active is good or bad. Always sounds good to me, that one. Uh, but it's not. Um, Etc. So does anyone have the answer to that particular one? Uh, B, D, and E are correct, yes. And A, yes. Uh, which gives you an example, and it's very difficult because I'm not giving you two minutes of question. Uh, so B, D, and E are correct, but A is also correct. How do we know A is correct? If you look at the very first line, it tells our, our local AS number. So the idea is, it doesn't really matter whose implementation it is, we should see that local AS number is 1. We should see the remote AS of all the numbers is AS4, and therefore it must be exterior BGP. Therefore A is actually true yeah okay uh, you could start writing comments like it's not running uh, because two of the neighbors are actually uh, active which is not good or idle which is also not good obviously it depends where it's split second things uh, but the timers tend to imply that has been going for some time and therefore it is an issue yep okay anyway uh, I haven't got long left so just two more questions uh, I should have picked on individuals, but anyway. Uh, here's another example, links free question. Uh, this is an example of implementation dependency. I'll, I'll talk while you just look at this. So the basic thing is we want you, uh, we teach BGP, where you should know how to manipulate paths. Uh, weight is actually a Cisco specific uh, uh, implementation thing, but it is something that's there. So you could say we should ignore it because it's not in the RSC, but it is something that's there. So in this particular question, it's trying to work out if you're on route to one, uh, how will you get to 172.16? So things you need to know is how do the weights work, how do the meds work, etc., etc. Uh, and if they are both in case, which one takes preference? Uh, and the answer, uh, this one's an easier one because it's just circled the best answer. Uh, but what is the best answer? I, I always like silence, but I, I'm, I'm sure I heard something out there. Yes, E is the correct answer in this particular one. So again, you might think all oh, the weights, but if we're on route of one, weights are implementation specific. So one thing is, if it's implementation specific, it shouldn't go out on the wire. And therefore, route of one will not know the weight uh, that R2's got or the weight that R3's got. Yeah, okay. So the weight is absolutely irrelevant, and therefore A and B are wrong. Uh, the med actually does not influence outgoing traffic at all. Yeah, okay. Uh, so again, you might be tricked into thinking it's either the highest, lowest med actually wins, but it affects incoming traffic rather than outgoing traffic. So the answer to that one is none of the above. Um, I've just realised. <laughs> Uh, yes, would be the one in that particular case, assuming there's nothing else. So in minus two minutes or whatever, many apologies for overrunning. I knew I threw too many in there. Uh, here's actually another example, links free question. Again, it's implementation specific. It could be using local preference and whatever. Uh, but what we've got there is a good example. Circle the best answer. Is it A, B, C, D, E, F or G? I will, given that I've run over time a little bit, E, F, and G are wrong because there's no load sharing going on at all. Router 1 wants to get to 172.16. Which way will it go? Will it go A, B, C, or D? This is actually a bit trickier one, and quite a few people could just fall into a trap of going the wrong way. Is anyone fast enough to get the answer to this one? Sorry? Hey. Maybe I should just let you all stew on it, actually. Yes, many apologies. The top uh, 172, 16, 192, 0, 19. Sorry, when I was copying these into slides, they got moved along a bit. Uh, 192, 0, 19. Middle one, 192, 20. And the last one, uh, 172, 16, 0, 0, 16. Uh, 
Uh, basically, I might as well tell you the answer because I've run over time. Many apologies. And the answer is... No. Uh, the answer is B. Sorry? Yes. Uh, now, yes. So the interesting one on this one is actually the answer is B. Yeah, okay. Uh, why? And the answer is 172.16.1920 slash 20 is too specific. And the range that we're rooting to, which is in the top question, we want to get to 209.224 is out of the range of uh, AS3, what it's advertising. And therefore, we'll actually pick the more specific route, which is the one above, and the highest weight, which is local to the router. Anyway, many apologies for talking far too much. Uh, it's a habit I've got. Uh, I don't know whether that's a question or a finger. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'll do it right this time and say Adrian from Andrews and Arnold before I ask the question. And the question is, obviously, um, how much do you cover IP6 on the course? Oh, interestingly, um, uh, I would say a bit less than currently is in, no, probably about the same amount as it's used on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, just to clarify, it is covered in links one, two, and three. Yeah, okay, so well, multi-code protocol, BGP, OSPF version three. Uh, we don't do it with ISIS, and also in links week one, it's covered. So it's in all of them, but it's not integrated throughout. Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry. At least it's not near beer. Well, it is probably near beer time. Yeah, sorry. I'll shut up. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>